Charlotte here again. Now I wanted to explain to you about prepping a canvas. This is one of the areas that my students ask the most about. I just want to explain what I do and in particular what that strange bag of wooden sticks is on the back which some of you might not know about. So first things first, let's talk about that bag of sticks. Now these are actually called canvas pegs and you know I've been painting for years before I actually looked up what these were for. Nobody told me what they were for and it's uh, to help stretch the canvas. So the first thing you want to do when you take your canvas out of the plastic is actually remove this bag of sticks partly because if you leave it on the back you see how if that was pushing through the canvas it's going to create a little bit of an indentation and canvas has a memory so you have to be really careful that you don't put your canvas against anything sharp or protruding which is going to create a little bump in the surface it's really hard to remove those once they've been sort of put into the into the canvas so these canvas pegs what are they for they're for stretching the canvas and making sure it's really tight but on a canvas this size you very rarely need them. The best thing to do is to hold the frame and just give the canvas a little tap like that. And if it sounds quite tight like a drum, you don't need the canvas pegs. They're really only useful for when you get much larger canvases. And then when you wobble the canvas, you almost hear like a motion and a movement. And that's when you know that you need these. So I'm just gonna show you where they actually go and what they're for. So if you just pop forward here and have a little look at these corners down here. So you see that there are some slits down in the corner. Now these slits are where the canvas pegs are designed to go. So if we take these out of the bag, now you might have plastic ones in your pack, but these ones are wooden and you see how they're really sort of sharp and pointy. Now, some of these triangles, they're going to be cut differently depending on the make and the brand. And what we actually do, they're designed to slide down the side of the canvas frame and they push into the slot like that. You see how that pushes into the slot here? And then I get another one. And this time, this one's going to slide across and it pushes in to there so you have two at right angles to one another and what you might need to do is just to tap those lightly with a hammer and it actually from pushing at two different angles it separates out the frame and you'll see a little gap being created in this corner as the frame slowly separates out and you'll find, however, that sometimes the holes for the canvas pegs are a little bit too small and these won't actually fit. And you've got to also be really careful. You see how pointy and sharp that is? Now, if I hammer that too enthusiastically, it's going to cut right through the canvas and create a tear on this side because these holes are often drilled far too deeply and they're going to create a hole in the side of your canvas. So be very wary when you're using these and whether you need them or not, it's uh, up to you, but you can, um, you can see these ones are actually created quite well because they're quite hard for me to pull out now. But sometimes if they're a little bit loose, if you turn the canvas around, then they can just, they can fall out really easily and you don't want anything like that. Okay. So now we've established that we don't actually need those canvas pegs. We can put those to one side. And I want to talk next about what to do with the sides of the canvas. Now, so many students who start with me think that you have to paint the sides of the canvas because they've seen it in other paintings. So let's just think back as to why that happened. Originally, uh, artists would paint on flat rolls of canvas or linen and when they would take them to the framers it would get stretched over a wooden frame so the original painting would be stretched around the sides. They weren't done afterwards but now that we have the convenience of these ready-made framed canvases already stretched for us 
A lot of people think that because they've seen painted sides that you have to carry your painting around the side. Now this is actually really hard to do. If you're focusing on the front of the canvas, then remembering to carry the picture around the side to get the colours exactly the same, to remember to do that layering and to have the perspective the same on the front and the side is actually really challenging. And if you don't pull it off, it can look a little bit odd. So what I do and what I encourage my students to do is to actually put masking tape around the sides, which keeps it fresh and clean. And then we're just focusing on the front of the canvas. Afterwards, when you remove the tape, you can always decide to paint the edge a different colour or you can, if you want, take the painting around the side, but it gives you options. And I don't want you to think that you've got to constantly remind yourself about all the thin edges of the canvas while you're focusing on the front, especially with the way that I paint and the way I teach painting with all of the thick layers. It's really hard to remember to take that thick paint around the sides. So what we're going to do is we're going to tape around the edges. Now I use for my taped corners and sides, it's a Scotch original tape. Uh, there'll be other types of tape available in your area, I'm sure. But these are, uh, this is a really good uh, multi-surface painter's tape. Now you have to make sure that, and it's worth spending a little bit more to get a good quality tape. You have to make sure that it's going to be firm grip enough. Don't get a light tack tape which you think is going to save the sides of the canvas. It's not going to stop the paint from being pushed underneath and you're going to end up with a messy edge. Now, before I apply the tape, I want you to just notice from over there, you see how there's a slight curve in the canvas. You can tell from the, the way that the light is just hitting on the, the edge of the canvas. Now, this is, a slightly soft curve because of course when they create the frame they don't want that to be a really hard edge because it would rip and tear the canvas so there's a little bit of a gentle curve and what we want to make sure we do is that the tape is just round the curve so when you're looking at the painting from the front your image carries just over the edge okay so from there what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rip myself off a piece of this tape now, it's quite handy if you can see what you're doing. Whoops, nearly lost the canvas there. So I'm just going to pin this down and then show you again what this looks like when it's pressed firmly against the canvas edge. So the most important place is right along that side where the paint is going to be meeting the tape. Now can you see that there's just a little section, a few millimetres of white, just there. So you want to make sure that your tape has come all the way round the side. Okay, and I'll show you what it looks like when you've finished. And here's one I made earlier. Some of you will recognise this from an earlier YouTube video as I was showing you about skies, simple sea and then how to make rocks. So you see that the tape has been used around the side. The thing to do when you've finished your painting, just find an edge. It's easier said than done sometimes. Find an edge. Now I can peel that off. Now sometimes when there's really thick, heavy paint there, the tape is going to rip and split. Never worry about that because the tape is holding all of the paint. See that? So we have this gorgeous, crisp edge. Now. If you saw this video, you would have seen how many layers that I applied to get those different colours and to get the thickness of the paint. So if I'd had to be thinking about taking the paint round the sides the whole time, it would have looked very different. And the corner there would have split the paint and I would have had quite a thin edge, which wouldn't have looked very professional. But now I've got that lovely crisp side. Okay. Now, one last point I want to make about these canvas pegs. And if you do decide to use them, you can put them in before you start painting, but you can also put them in afterwards because they don't make that much difference in the stretch of the canvas. It's not as if you do a portrait and then you put the canvas pegs in and it 
or sort of stretches the, the portrait out of proportion like a, a circus mirror. It only tightens to such a small degree that it would stop there being any wobble in the canvas if you have that at the start. But as I said, with smaller size canvases, so this is a 16 by 20 inch, a 40 by 50 centimetre, smaller canvases like this, you definitely don't need them. And as I said, just give it a little tap on the top and you're never going to need to use those canvas pegs. They can be really good tools for mark making if you want to uh, use them as palette knife edges or if you have a, a fire or a barbecue, they're great for burning. Okay, so those are two really good tips for starting off painting uh, with canvases, how to prepare the canvas. The other tip I have for you is about um, gesso. Now that's gesso spelt with a G and you probably see on the labels of your canvas that it says uh, triple primed or double primed with gesso and that means that they are spraying the canvas which would not normally be this bright and white with an undercoat of paint. Some artists like to do another coat of gesso before they start painting but gesso can be quite thick and it can leave brush marks and texture in underneath the painting. So what I prefer to do is just to leave them like this because I know we're going to be doing so much thick layering with the paint, using the paint as it should be used. Lots of thick layering which is going to cover over any imperfections in the canvas and create that lovely opaque uh, density that we love. Another thing that I don't mind at all about leaving the canvas as it is already gessoed so I really like the canvas texture. So if I'm going to see any of that, I don't want to be putting another thick layer of gesso over the top, which might remove that canvas texture. But that comes down to personal preference. And if you would like to smooth out the surface, that's what, that's what you can do. Plenty of brands of gesso around. But just in case that was a question that you'd had that you didn't know what to do about. So there we go, canvas pegs, what to do with the sides, Ultimately, that's your decision, but I would suggest putting masking tape around the edges so you've got really clean sides at the end and you can focus on the top and gesso. All right, have fun. See you next time.